thank you everyone for being alive on a Saturday morning at Nauticon. I know how difficult that is. We all kind of have to suffer through Saturday mornings together here. It's a, it's a <laughs> It's true. At, at, at least we're not doing talks on Sunday mornings anymore. That was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for coming out. Uh, let me introduce here Andrew Erickson. Uh, we all know him, of course, as that wonderful, wonderful Swedish composer. He received critical, critical acclaim for his 2003 album, A, and his album, Dropping the Rich, was named one of Amazon.com's best of 2007. He toured with Modest Mouse in 2005 before moving to Los Angeles to work on that third full-length album. He will appear later next month on the WB's Rockville CA television show. He's here today to talk to you about Arduinos. Everybody, Andrew Erickson. Hey, everyone. All right. Hey, I'm going to be talking about things that are very small. So if anyone wants to see the very small things, you should probably get closer to the front. Like, if you want to just move your chair right here, it would be awesome. Um, or you can use your super awesome eyesight. OK, I'm going to be talking about Arduinos and such. And I have a clicker. Bing. OK, um, this is an RFID tag reader that hopefully will come on. There we go. And it does some little stuff. And then we have an RFID tag. And then we touch it. and it displays the tag code. And to me, building something with an Arduino, like, this is pretty simple, but it's like magic. Like, I, I went from not being able to really put things together to, like, this is really cool. And it's not much code, and there's a couple little pieces, and I'm going to pass this around. And if you break it, it's cool, because it has a debugging port. And uh, it didn't work when I got here if anyone would like to see this thing and the magic that is inside of it. There's a LCD that is talking serial to a, a, an Arduino. And there is a uh, RFID tag reader that's talking serial to an Arduino. And the tag reader was like 40 bucks, the LCD was like 15, and the Arduino was 10. And like that's magic to me. And I'll explain how it all works. So starting with you, have that. OK, clicker. OK, again, they're really, really super cool. Um, is everyone familiar with the Arduino? Like, they know what they are, kind of? Does everyone have one? OK. And uh, I'm giving this talk purely to motivate people to talk about Arduinos so that I can learn more cool stuff. Um, I learned a long time ago that if you give a talk or have a podcast or you're interviewed or whatever, you have to be much more of an expert than you need to be so that you don't look like an idiot. And uh, this has helped me a lot with such things. OK, Arduinos are less than $30, unless you buy really fancy things. They uh, all happy open source coolness. Like, they're so open. The hardware is open along with the software. They have their own little subset of a programming language that they took off of processing, which is another completely open source thing. Um, the, the most Arduinos that you see will have an AT Mega 168. The new ones have a new chip. It's like a 332 or whatever. And it gives you more memory and more RAM. It actually doubles those things. And you can fit an awful lot on these little bitty things. Um, there's 14 input output pins, which is the magic of the whole thing. You have digital ends and digital outs, analog ins, analog outs, and you can hook them up to crazy little sensors, which we're going to talk about. Six are analog in, and six of the digital are pulse width modulation. Um, there's no analog out. So you can read you know, a wave with the analog in, and with the pulse width modulation, it's like flicking the light switch to kind of make analog with digital. All good? OK. All right, this is what a basic Arduino looks like. This is your AT Mega, which is the, the, the microcontroller. It's the brains of the whole thing. They're like $4. So if you completely fry your Arduino, you're out 4 bucks, as compared to a basic stamp when you buy the whole new thing. Um, it has, most of them have USB, which is really, really cool, because um, then they work with your Mac without fancy serial adapters and all that crap. They have their digital pins, and the analog pins, and the 5 volt and 9 volt in the ground. And a, a reset switch, and a clock, and things like that. 
This is what they look like in real life. Um, this is the brand new one. The fancy word I can't say means 2009 in Italian. They're made by people in Italy. And they are proud to say it on the board. Um, there's a bunch of clones for these things, and they're usually called three Duinos. And it's pretty much the same thing, but it's a little cheaper, and it's not made by the official Arduino people. Um, and it's all open source and happy, and the Arduino guys don't really care because they're not in it to sell a bunch of hardware. Um, this is a free Duino with a serial port. The Arduino started out with a serial port, and this is a clone of that. Um, this is a free Duino with a full-size USB port. SparkFun made this. It's the skinny. It's, uh, you're supposed to embed these things in your projects, but they cost more than a real Arduino. Um, they turned that into the Arduino Pro, which you can have in 3.3 volts or 5 volts, and again, they're more expensive than a plain Arduino. If you want to just build your own, they're like 10 bucks for a bare bones kind of thing. All right, this is the Wii, which became the Arduino Pro Mini. And when I say it's an official Arduino, that means they give 10% of their profit to the Arduino group to continue their stuff. Um, this is what's inside of the RFID tag reader that's being passed around. It's like the size of a stick of gum. It's $10. And it's a really bare bones free Duino. This is the just plain old bare bones free Duino by the same guy. This is a lily pad, which is supposed to be uh, for embedding into clothing which is really kind of neat. Apparently you could wash these things, but I have yet to try that because I don't want to just, it just seems wrong. They have conductive Velcro now, so you could just un-Velcro it in my mind. Um, you can, I don't know if you all watch Craft Magazine or the show on the podcast, whatever. They use a lot of these. This is a project based on the Arduino that's called the Sanguino. And it has a lot of more of a digital ins and outs and such. You can breadboard these things out. Um, you can build your own really badly with a bunch of wire. You can build a really bare bones thing. This was 10 bucks, and it actually has extra crap it doesn't need, like that LED and that resistor, just to make sure it works. If you're going to be building lots of little things, you can make a bunch of these, and it's a lot cheaper. Um, there's even some people that are like, we know the programming language is open source and the hardware is open source and everyone's sharing code, but that's not open source enough. So we're going to have this, which is called the Penguino, which apparently means PIC microcontroller, not Linux. And they have a clone of the development environment and they have their own subset of the language and it's actually kind of cool. Okay, now real, so we all had Arduinos. Does everyone have more free Duinos than they have Arduinos? Okay, because I'm in that boat, and they've sold 60,000 of these things, uh, of the official ones, and there's a lot more of the unofficial ones out there. So that's a lot of folks burning their fingers with some solder. Okay, this is a potentiometer, which is the first thing we're going to start with. And the potentiometer, everyone's familiar? Three pins, has a wiper. Is everybody that's not? Okay. So we're going to write a little program called a sketch. It's going to read this potentiometer and it's going to display its value over the serial connection to my laptop. So there's three parts of an Arduino program, or sketch. You declare your variables, like this. Um, we're going to say pin 4 is the potentiometer pin, and then it has a value, which we have to declare. Then we have our setup, where um, I've grayed out the serial, because you don't need it unless you want the serial. But we're going to start our serial connection, and then we're going to set hot pin as an input pin. And then here's our fancy loop. We're going to read that analog value, because it's between 0 and 5 volts. So it would be analog. And then we are going to print it. And then we're going to delay for a tenth of a second. And then we're going to read it again. So let's see what that looks like. OK, this is the development environment. Um, we're going to test our sketch, make sure it works. All right, it worked. So we're going to upload it to the board. Dum dum dum. The little serial lights are blinking. It's going. And then we're going to look at our serial monitor. All right, when it reads between the 0 and 5 volts, it uh, gives you a number between 0 and 1024. 
so that you can actually work with this stuff. So I'm going to fiddle the knob, and down there at the bottom, it's going to change. All right? And that's pretty damn simple to do. So we move on to much more complicated things. Here's our whole sketch. We're going to read a soft potentiometer. This allows you to do touch. I'm going to take the same sketch that we have, and I'm going to hook this thing up. Um, has everyone seen one of these? Like, you can go around in a circle, kind of like your iPod, or you can have a linear one. And that is the 5 volts. This is the part where you should have sat closer, because you can see all the plugging up. Uh, pin 4, and ground. So we switch switch back to the shield monitor, and it moves. Awesome. We can read potentiometers. We can figure out touch. And that opens GIMP. All right, so now we're going to go with motion. This is 10 bucks. And here's a motion detector. We're going to take that same sketch. We're going to unplug things. We're going to look on this little thing and see it's ground out power. That's how it works. This is, uh, this is the parallax one, which is like, again, 10 bucks. And four, you must be ground. We're going to go back to our same sketch. And it says no motion. And if I hook it up right, which I apparently did not, there we go. It's determined motion. I'm dead. Wake up. Anyway, in theory, that works. Moving on. Temperature. This is a LM34 or 35, which will give you Fahrenheit or Celsius. Remember, we haven't changed our sketch at all. We're going to plug it up to 5 volts, to pin 4, and the ground. All right, now we're getting a number of. Uh, whatever that is, and if you look at the data sheet for this, it'll tell you how to convert that to whatever. So I'm going to touch it, and it's going to get a little hotter. And we're going to change our sketch just a smidge. This will be completely wrong information, but hot valve equals hot valve divided by 2. Upload to the board. And we look at it again. And it's a little bit closer to the actual temperature. There's much more complicated calculation to actually determine that, because it's not direct. But whatever. We've added one more line of code, and now we can read temperature, touch, and a potentiometer. Kind of neat. All right, moving on. Now we're going to go to some sound. This is the piezo buzzer. Does everyone know how these work? There's uh, two little plates, electricity goes through them, they vibrate, and they make an annoying noise. So let's knock that one out. This one's going to take a new sketch. Sound pin is going to be 10, so let's move that over there. Upload to the board. When you upload to the board, it checks to make sure everything works before it uh, sends it on over.
Does everyone hear the annoying little noise? Okay. All right, with this sketch, we're setting the sound pin as 10. We're setting it as an output instead of an input. We're going to digital write sound pin high, which gives it five volts. We're going to delay for a second. We're going to write it to low, and then we're going to delay for a second, and we're going to continue to loop. So now we've got touch, potentiometer, temperature, and annoying noises. Is it still going? I'm sorry, I really don't hear high-pitched noises. Was it loud? Because I can barely hear it. All right, moving on. Thank you. So now we're going to do piezos and buttons. It's getting complicated. All right, I've got a bunch of buttons, five in fact, hooked up to two piezos, and as I push the buttons, it's gonna give them different voltages and make different annoying noises. And that sketch, if anyone would like to see, I'm gonna show it to you. No, that's just uh, sending general stuff to the piezo. Um, you can get little DTMF generating chips and actually do that. I'm working on a uh, PBX based off of the Arduino because the PBX is pretty much just plug and wires together. So not the right sketch. It's on there somewhere, but we're gonna move on. Hear the dead air now. All right, so now let's move on to LEDs. Um, LED, you send power through one, you put ground to the other, it glows up. Glows. So let's hook up an LED to this thing. Okay, LEDs work just like the piezos do, and that you send five volts to them. Um, you dump them through a resistor, and you're good to go into the LED. So we plug it into pin five, or 10, 10. And it's gonna blink for us. So we can control light now, and again, we haven't written a lot of code. Um, I have a little sketch here that we can have two LEDs have grayed out all the information for the second one, where we digital write it high, and then we digital write it low, delay and make it blink. Um, we also can do it analog, and I've got a little for loop to make it start at low, go up, and then go down. And if you've done any programming at all, that looks pretty familiar. Good easy stuff. Okay, this is a knock sensor which is a backward piezo. Remember I said there's two plates that vibrate? If you hook the piezo up backwards and you smack it, the two plates touch, and you can sense if something gets hit. And I've got it changing the LEDs as it senses a hit with my awesome expensive drum set. And uh, anyone want a knock sensor? All hooked up and fancy? There you go. Okay, camera activation. This was, let's see. All right, first off, I built an alarm system with a, just like the um, RFID tag reader, with a really bare bones free Arduino because it's $10. And it's got six inputs, and when these things split, it says, hey, it's been broken, it hooked up to an LCD. And I thought that was really neat. So I wanted to build a project where I actually built everything without using pre-made stuff, and that was my camera activator. And I've got a knock sensor hooked up to it so that when it hears a noise, it sends a uh, infrared signal to the camera. This is a $10 Nikon remote that I uh, bypassed the button with a relay and made it. And I've got a light sensor 
for such a thing so that it could detect light. I was trying to take pictures of lightning, but apparently the trick to taking pictures of lightning is to go out into the storm and just take pictures like crazy and hope you get one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I tried it with the sound and then I tried it with the light and nothing. I mean, obviously the sound's after the light. But it's good times. Um, I don't know, maybe we can annoy the dog with it. Okay, anybody want to see all that soldered together? Okay, you better watch out. <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to the bouncing ball. So we can, like, all the other stuff we've learned, very easy stuff. We're going to go into processing. Processing is what the Arduino language environment is based on. Um, there's a firmware for the Arduino called Fermata. Fermata? One of those. It's spelled that way. And uh, it allows you to load this to the Arduino and then control it directly from processing. And processing was written for graphics artists to write Java code really, really easily. And it's pretty much the same language as the Arduino with more functions. So uh, let's run this thing after it's hooked up. And I've got an Arduino here that is hooked to two uh, distance sensors. And as I move my hand up and down, it moves the ball. And then I can do left to right. And if anybody would like to play with that, I'm going to have it there. But uh, I'm working on a game where another ball bounces around, and then you try to follow it. And it's actually really, really difficult to move things like that. Um, we built an Etch-a-Sketch for our last talk that was a, uh, well, pretty much, you had to have the laptop, you had to have some programming knowledge, and you had to have a custom controller. So for like, I don't know, $1,000, you could have a digital Etch-a-Sketch. And uh, it was sweet. You could change the width of the line, which was the added feature. Uh, I am using a uh, range sensor, which you can buy really expensive ones, or you can buy really cheap ones. And it sends out an infrared signal, bounces back into itself. If anyone would like to see that, we have that. Um, a who? A theremin. You know, if I hooked it up to the annoying piezo, I bet we could have some uh, load of fun. Everyone get to see? Everyone open it up? Does it still work? Yes, good job. Okay, um, what was that? Oh, and with processing, it's, it's very neat. Um, if I were to export an application, I can make a Java application for Windows or Mac or Linux. It's a self-contained thing, and that's kind of neat. So I can make this game and actually just export it. And that's an awful lot of code, if you've noticed to uh, have a ball moving around the screen. And that's a really interesting way of inputting stuff into the computer that you just kind of, you're all fluid. All right, moving along. Okay, then we've got wireless serial. You can, the Arduino has a serial port just in and out on it. And you can set, obviously, the, if it only has one, this wouldn't work because we have several serial connections. So you can use a library called Software Serial that someone wrote. It's all open source and happy. Like, you don't even have to write most of the code. You're just like, Google, I want to have an RFID tag reader with my Arduino, and it's 100 pages of people that are like, I figured it out. Um, so anyway, you've got this motion detector hooked up to an, R an Arduino that's also hooked into a, uh, antenna that's broadcasting a serial transmission. So we're going to turn this on. And we're going to monitor you folks. Um, OK, I have this very professional looking device here that is going to receive that transmission and display it on an LCD. And OK, it's clear. Somebody, Jay? Move a bunch. 
Oh, it sees you. Um, these things have like a range of 500 feet. If you wanted to set these up outside your house and scare away the possums, it's actually kind of neat. You could even have the annoying buzzer if you could hear it. <laughs> um, they have much cheaper things, but these are cooler looking with the antenna, but you don't actually need it for the communication. Okay, when I said the software serial thing, here's the very, very extensive code to, to set that up. Um, a transmit and receive pin, we set up a connection, transmit and receive pin, and we set up a connection, and we name it something. So instead of like serial.print, it's LCD serial.print, and it prints it to your LCD, which was something like I thought would be very complicated to do, but apparently it only takes three wires to hook up an LCD to these things. Okay, this is the log for the Synergy 4000 toothbrush, which is, <laughs> <laughs> we came up with this a couple weeks ago. Um, we, we tried to have a name that was buzzword compliant. Um, the Synergy 3000 was a complete dismal failure, but the 4000 actually works. Um, it allows two people to use a toothbrush and then update the internet of when it's being used, and it's electric. So uh, it is using a network shield to do a post request to a web server that's looking for this. So when it sends it to this PHP page with the super secret key, it'll update, and then the server the web page is running on now has it in the database, and we can do asterisky stuff, or we can email, or we can send text messages. And uh, I don't know, I, I live two states away from my wife, and I'm thinking about updating her every time I brush my teeth, several different ways. Um, Code for that, this is the big block O code. Setting up Ethernet, massively complicated. You have to have a MAC address, an IP address, and a server address. Woo. You actually, um, then in the setup, we begin. We set a button pin as input. And if it's high and it's connected, then it goes to that URL, and which continues on down to here. And if you would like to add your toothbrush and such, you can copy that URL down. Um, so let's go into this Synergy 4000. If, you, if, if Ethernet is not connected to your toothbrush, you're really missing out. <laughs> and I don't have a wired connection. So uh, we're going to have to pretend it works. But I've got the Synergy 4000 right here, actually going to Twitter now. So um, right now it's, it's on Josh, as you can see. Josh is getting ready. But we can switch it to Andrew. And uh, then we hit the button. It activates the toothbrush. And it sends the information to Twitter, which there's no internet connection. And I forgot to write, hey, it didn't work, into the code. But uh, if we were hooked up, we would have updated my Twitter account or my toothbrushing. Anybody want to try it out? Apparently, you have to be either Andrew or Josh. But I mean, I don't really care if you want to use Josh's side. Josh was supposed to be here to help me with my talk. And uh, he had some car trouble. But it's all good. So uh, here's it actually working. We've got Andrew here, and then we switch to Josh. And don't tell him I was using his toothbrush. And then it connected, and it sends my Twitter message. While shaky cam, blurry cam. And by the time it clears out, you can't see the vibrating Brussels, so we hit the button again. And it switches. Um, it actually has more oomph than a regular toothbrush, because um, we're using 5 volts now. OK, I'm going to give you Josh's half of the talk very quickly. Um, you all have seen Craft Magazine. You all have seen Make Magazine. They kind of mesh together this whole, we're hackers, and we're building stuff, and we're coding things. And these crafters who are like, we're building things, and we're going to start coding things, too, with our lily pads and fun stuff. 
And it's taking this whole groups and merging them together. And it's really, really neat. I really want LEDs all over my clothing. I really want to have uh, an infrared detector on my hoodie that when it detects an infrared signal, maybe a camera, it just blasts out infrared. So I'm kind of the faceless guy walking around. Um, I really want to have a Zelda handmade little, where you thread the needle through the screen that plays the Zelda song when people walk by, because that would be really, really sweet. Maybe something Red Dwarf. Um, like there's these whole two convergent groups of folks, and it's really, really neat. Everybody's shared and happy. Um, we're going to be setting up all this crap at the lock picking table. I don't have any for sale, but again, they're like 30 bucks. Go buy one. Um, we're going to be demonstrating TV out, which is a massively complicated system of uh, a VGA cable or an RCA cable and three resistors. Um, and you can talk to an old TV and with your Arduino, and you can play Pong, or you can just display random crap. And like this is less than a dollar. Um, we're going to be showing how to upload a sketch on homebrew equipment. So like I built this, the really bare bones when it doesn't have a programming interface, and maybe I want to build 10 of these. So you get a zip socket, and you can send code to these things and script all that. Um, we're going to be playing with lily pads. That was more Josh's thing, but I have one with a bunch of wires and sensors if you want to play with it. Um, I have an Arduino Mega, which is the brand new one that has hella more pens, like 31, 52 digital pens, which is an awful lot of sensing that you can do and playing with all that kind of stuff. I have some links, the Arduino main site. Um, I work at a military school that it's allowing me to teach a summer school class for high school credit on Arduinos. And I'm going to take the kids out, make them take their shoes off, and we're going to teach them programming outside. And then we're going to come up with ideas of stuff to build. And I really feel we're going to have robots that fight, like, pretty much. Um, but we're going to spend three or six weeks doing that with high school students, if anybody knows a high school student that wants to learn to play with things like this. As you see in the code, like, it was very minimal. And I mean, soldering is not that tricky. You just kind of follow the line of the wire. Um, we have a blog at Daily Duino where we try to update a lot with videos and pictures and all that mess. Um, if there are any questions or ideas for a high school class, if anybody was a teacher, um, I talked to the guy that invented the Arduino. And apparently, high schools in the United States aren't using it because there's no lesson plans for it. And most teachers need a lesson plan because they don't understand this kind of stuff. So we're trying to write English language lessons plans for these things and get the Arduino into schools because that's really cool. Like the kids can have one at home and if they break it, it's four dollars. All right, we're good to go on that. Anything? Sir, ma'am. No, no. I I'm totally down on that. I really want my whole body to light up when my cell phone goes off and be a little bit more annoying. And you can totally do that. I actually, um, the, the craft side of the Arduino world actually publishes a lot of books on this kind of thing. OK. It would be cool. Anybody else? How much am I time? OK, we have, we, have, we have 20 minutes to actually sit down and play with this stuff which is much more fun to listen to me talk about it, like hold it in your hand. Are we good? Yes. On the who? It all depends on the quality of the piezo. And uh, you can hook a potentiometer up to read a value so you can change the sensitivity as the thing's running. OK? All right, let's play Arduinos. Turn some lights on. Let's touch stuff. You want to come talking to my throat? Why would you use a uh, piezo instead of an accelerometer? 
because a piezo is like 50 cents and an accelerometer is like $30. Accelerometer would do a much better job. Um, but you can totally read those with the Arduino, it's fine. Okay, any more? So was, was it just me or in your sketch list did I see a sketch entitled Dildo? Oh, um, so we built a programmable Dildo that had an LCD that talked to you. Um, we're, we're, we're actually looking for models. If anyone wants to, um, let me make a cast. Um, let's see, I have it somewhere, a video. You really weren't supposed to see that. Video with the model. Good lord. Where's my, where's my dildo? Oh, there we go. Oh, lordy. So yeah, we turn it on. It's got a uh, serial interface, so that's handy. The lights are independent from the motors, and they're all in, so you can control up to uh, five different pleasure points. Um, well, you know, we need we need the mold to, for it to go in. Apparently, now it would be painful, and. Uh, See, Arduinos are not only cool, they're sexy. Um, what I'd really like to see is a dildo that can make other dildos. And you just kind of throw it in a box of parts and it... Ah, <laughs> uh, where's the music? Yes. Um, Apparently, the breathalyzer that we purchased takes 24 hours of burn in before it works. And why they don't just burn them in before they send them out, I don't know. And I have yet to get one to actually work. The one Spark Fun sells. Ooh. And this is a, your $1,000 Etch-A-Sketch. A $1,000 Etch-A-Sketch? It's a little crappier than a real Etch-A-Sketch. <laughs> but it's digital. OK. Anyway, come play with Arduinos, and you can look at the videos. And if there's anything else you'll have, ask real quick. Oh, we're, we're working on a book where there's three of us and we all have completely different mindsets. So we're just compiling all of the crap we can come up with. And uh, it's going to start out as just like our talk started out with, here's how you do this one independent thing. Here's how you do this one independent thing. And then the second half is going to be like, here's how we put all these independent things together and build cool crap. Yes. And we have like 100 pages done. But what's that? Um, with uh, Morgellon, who's help, who was supposed to be here, and uh, Fizzo, oh, the publishing company. We're talking to two of them right now. But apparently on your first book, you don't make any money. So it doesn't really matter. It's just whoever has the biggest distribution and actually lets us do it.
I just feel that it's going to cost me money to do that. No? Are you talking about it? Okay. All right. Yeah, I like to have a print thing I can write in. Like, I, it's hard to write on a PDF. Okay. Yes. They are. And uh, no, the original started on the 8, which was really junky. And then they went to the, what is it, the 128? And then they moved up to the 332. And then the um, fancy, expensive one here. Good God, what does that say? I don't know. It says something else, but it, it uses something bigger. Um, the lily pad and stuff uses the 128, just in a different package. And I also have uh, more fun, cool stuff to play with. This is pretty much a Game Boy that you can hook into your Arduino. It has a touch screen and a controller and things like that. You can really come play with Arduino stuff. All right. Any more questions? Okay, we're done. <laughs>